M Tracker 3D and MO2 in Motion 5 is a powerful combination. As you can see here, my friend Fabio is uh, is a robot. Hey, Fabio! Whoa! <laughs> hey, you're excited. You want me to show them how to make you? Well, I can show them how to import you and animate you with a with a camera tracker. Oh, okay. There you go again. All right. I don't know why I named him Fabio, but I did. This is Fabio, and he and I are going to show you together how to do this. All right. Let's get started. So this model came from sketchfab.com and we will provide the link. So when downloading anything from sketchfab, you'll notice this download 3D model option here. And you're usually presented with the original format of FBX, an auto converted format GLTF, and an augmented reality format of USDZ. We're going to be using the GLTF format for this tutorial. So of course, click download and just place that model wherever you'll be able to find it. I have it here on my external SSD in my awesome folder, Fabio. Now, of course, I've already downloaded this, so we're good to go. Now over in Motion 5, I have gone ahead and tracked my scene using M-Tracker 3D. We have many tutorials on how to use M-Tracker 3D, but essentially apply it to your clip, click the track button, and then set your point that you want your model to be in. So now we need to go over to Generators and Motion VFX, and we will drag MO2 into our scene. When working with MO2, you want to change to adjust item. And then we're going to go over to our inspector, and this is where we can load our M Tracker 3D data. Now, we already have a default camera. We can go ahead and delete that because M Tracker 3D comes with its own camera. Let's go to copy track in M Tracker 3D, back over to MO2. Let's change back to adjust item there and then you can see in the add section we can go to m tracker 3d data and now we have that m tracker 3d scene with our camera and our 3d group the next thing we need to do is change our background to alpha channel so that we can see what's going on beneath our mo2 clip and you can see that our 3D group gizmo is placed in the same position as our M Tracker 3D gizmo. So the next thing we need to do is add our model to our 3D group. So let's go to add and we're going to import this model that we just downloaded from Sketchfab earlier. When you click import model, it will open up a finder window and you can go and locate your downloaded model there. So we're going to select Fabio and we will select that GLTF and click choose. And our import model dialog window comes up. Let's go ahead and change that category. I've already made a category Fabio. Now the next thing that you'll see here is the import materials and you'll notice on import materials you have metalness roughness, specular glossy, and legacy. Now, how do we know which one that we want to choose? Why don't we go back over really quickly to the Sketchfab window and let's show you where you can get that information. You can see here when you click more model info, you can see PBR, that stands for physical based rendering, but that is the workflow that the original model was using, which you can see here is metalness. Now, if you also scroll over the viewer there, you can click Model Inspector and you can see metalness, roughness in our material channels as well, just to make sure that you're using the right one. So we're gonna go to Import Material. We will select metalness, roughness. And you can see under our animation that we're going to import the end condition. Do we want it to hold, loop, or ping pong, which is just kind of going back and forth. We're going to loop that animation. Now on Sketchfab, you can see this animation is 10 seconds long. And our composition, our video here is about 26 seconds long. So if we just set that to three, we know that that will be 30 seconds of looping, which will cover our video. Okay, and we can see now that we have Fabio has been imported. So let's go ahead and click add while holding down option. And that is going to add our model into our 3D group with all of our parameters set at zero, how we need those. 
Okay, and as you can see here, Fabio has come in on our 3D group set correctly, but it is much too large, but it is following that camera animation perfectly. So we just need to have Fabio there selected and let's scale him down quite a bit. Now, we don't want Fabio to be stuck to the ground here. We actually want it to appear as though he's flying and floating in front of me. So what we're gonna do is we can either have Fabio or our 3D group selected for this. So we're just gonna go ahead and grab Fabio there inside of our 3D group, and we're going to bring him up on the Y axis so it appears as though he's floating. Now notice there are some other elements there with Fabio that I don't necessarily want, such as the scanner and this little item here in front of him. So what we need to do is go into our Fabio group and we are going to select each of those elements there and just check those off so that they are no longer part of our model. Now the next thing I want to do is add a shadow catcher. So with our 3D group selected, we're going to go and add model, go to primitives and plane while holding option down. And that's going to set that plane up in our zero parameters. Next thing we need to do is add a new material. And then we are going to scroll down in our opacity section and change that to shadow catcher. Now, you can't see a shadow just yet. That's because we don't have a light casting any shadows. So again, with our 3D group selected, we're gonna go to add and holding option down, we're going to add a light and let's add a sphere this time. Now, obviously that is way too bright, way too intense. So let's bring that intensity way, way down. And we need to bring our light radius down as well. We need to turn on enable shadows. That's what's going to work with our shadow catcher and then turn render shape off. Now, if we bring that light up, you can then see that we've got that light being cast on our model and you can see the shadow beneath. We're going to play with the intensity and light radius and just keep making those adjustments until we get our shadow exactly how we want it. Okay, now that we have our shadow nice and soft, we're going to go back in to our Fabio group and we're just going to start playing with the position of him. Now notice in that group, we also have our plane and our light. So our light is going to follow him, which is what we want. We want that shadow to be there right below. So we're going to just start messing with the rotation and all of our model because we are going to animate him with keyframes frames to make him look as though he's just kind of flying around there as you can see I was reacting so we want to come up and set our position of our model that we know is right there within my eye line and that is going to be position one so I'm going to go ahead and set my keyframe all button here and now any change that we make to our robot, you will see a keyframe will be added for that position, rotation, etc. anything that we do have added. So we're going to continue to keyframe all the way around so that my robot is flying there and reacting to everything that I'm saying. All right, and now that we are done setting those keyframes, I wanted to open our keyframe editor really quickly to show you that while I did do my base animation in a linear style, I have went in here and I have made these points Bezier points. So let me just highlight this really quickly so you can see that we have these Bezier handles. Now, what those are doing are just allowing us to fine tune our animation. As you can see, if you you change your interpolation to Bezier, you get those nice handles and you are able to better refine and smooth out your animation so that it has a bit of a more natural look and it's not so linear and straight. 
All right, lastly, I'm just going to make sure that my light is looking exactly how I want it. So I'm going to go into my scene settings, and the next thing I'd like to do is go into environment, and I'm going to change my environment to something that looks a little bit more like the day we were filming. As you can see, it was a bit cloudy, so we're going to go into our cloudy section, and if we click playground, you can see that the changes on Fabio there are much better reflective of the way that the actual ambient light looked. Fabio still seems a little bit dark, so what I'm going to do is scroll down and I'm just going to duplicate the light that I already have there, and I'm going to change that new light to ambient, and we can just mess with that intensity there so that we can brighten up our entire scene and he can match a bit better. After making those adjustments to my ambient light, I'm going to add M Film Look to a master group so I can get our final look. M Tracker 3D and MO2 in Motion 5 is a powerful combination. As you can see here, my friend Fabio is, uh, is a robot. Hey, Fabio. Whoa. <laughs> hey, you're excited. You want me to show them how to make you? Well, I can show them how to import you and animate you with a with a camera tracker. Oh, okay. There you go again. All right, I don't know why I named him Fabio, but I did. This is Fabio, and he and I are going to show you together how to do this. All right, let's get started. Again, this is George Edmondson with Motion VFX. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.